Ooh, well, what do you think? Do you like my rack? Kind of an upside down pyramid of CRTs here. We looking good on here or what? I know I don't look that good. All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a review on a rack. That's right, how exciting. We're gonna review a rack. In all seriousness, we are looking at the Trinity Rack. Now this is a rack I found from Costco. It cost me personally 120 US dollars. And that's one thing I wanna get across here when I do product reviews for you guys. I don't normally take on sponsored uh, items to review here on the channel. This was again something I paid for with my own money. That way I can give you an honest and true review of this product because I'm like you, I had to pay to get it on my own. So there's no bias as far as if I got this product for free or anything. Nope, I paid for it all with my own money. Another disclaimer, I did buy this from Costco, which many of you will not be able to buy because you're not a member at Costco or you don't have a Costco in your area. So you may be able to find this. Again, it's called the Trinity Rack and it's a metal wire rack. Looks pretty generic, but this one I know is higher quality because Costco generally doesn't take on products that are on the lower quality end and offer them in the store. All right, let's get into the rack and take a look at it from the perspective of buying it, opening it up, and seeing what you get inside your box. So this is the Trinity Rack. That's right, Trinity Rack. We're going to assemble this thing. Now this is a rack that can be on wheels or not be on wheels you have a couple different setups about it but it's one of these high quality wire steel racks i'm going to do two shelves and we'll do one with wheels one without we're going to set it up down here in the bunker for extra storage for pvms and crts and tubes and this is what you get you have a couple bags one here with a bunch of pieces to build the rack then you have a bag full of the wheels. And then all you get are the racks themselves, which are nice. You get a total of six of those and then eight rods. So I'm gonna break this down even further and start building this and we'll see how it looks. So far, this has been pretty easy. I'm about to move on to the stage where I add the two shelves. To do this, you just screw on your wheels here and you need to make sure though that you have the wheels i believe this is right having the brakes on the same side for them to be most effective that way you can lock down one side and then the other side has no brakes on it it's just the wheels and then those are just screwed right into the bottom post that's all threaded and then this is slid on here under the first setting and you have to use these little clips clip them in the slots and then it uses weight and pressure to hold this shelving in place. So I'm gonna put two more shelves on this. I should be able to just slide this second shelf over top of this and hopefully everything will work out. Just like that. Let's see. And just like that. Here we go. Try to do it all the way up, kind of as high as I can. Clips in there like that. It clips in there like that. And it doesn't go all the way together because you're gonna put that pressure and weight on there with the actual shelf. I'm also gonna come in here and I'm gonna stop up the top like that since I'm not actually gonna be making this into a tall shelf. All right, let's stick the final shelf up top here and it should fit over nicely just like that wow this is actually much taller than i thought it was going to be wow that feels really solid we've got one final shelf to put on here and then we should be done building yeah there we go. That looks pretty good. This new rack fits in here quite nicely. Actually, almost perfectly right in this spot. And I wanted to make sure that I had it high enough to fit 20 inch CRTs on the bottom shelf, maybe two of them. But my issue is these racks are just wire racks. And I believe that over time, 
a lot of weight on this will actually cause those to buckle and bend and I don't really want to do that. I want to do something to reinforce that. Uh, but I wanted to make one note here. These are nice, these little tabs or feet on the bottom here because you can use these to actually level out your rack. And as you can see, it's really solid. It's not moving after I've got it set perfectly. But I need to go in here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a piece of wood on each one of these shelves that needs to be no bigger than probably 17 inches and then uh, this direction it needs to fit within the ends so it's going to need to be no bigger than 44 so it needs to be 44 inches by 17 inches and I need probably well to be honest with you I'm going to need six of them let's go see what I can find up in the storage area I did manage to find an old piece of wood out here at the shop and I'm going to use this. Now this is a total of 78, almost 79 inches in this direction and to make it easy on myself I'm going to cut this right down the center and then I'll have a little over 39 inches on each side and that'll fit into the shelves. On this edge, let's see what we've got. On this edge we've got four feet. Well thankfully this is not about precision because I don't even own a table saw. And uh, we're going to have to do this with just a skill saw, but hopefully I can get it done, make it look good. I'm going to cut it down into a couple shelves. I might be able to get a three stack on each one of these. If I get them to about 16 inches, then I'll have all my shelves I need from these two pieces of wood. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut 16 inches on this line, and then we'll have a shelf here. Not exactly straight down here, but that shouldn't be an issue. I'll sand these edges and then make a couple more of these. All right, my first three shelves are ready. Again, this is nothing about precision here. So hopefully they'll fit in there right. Let's go install them on the new rack and see how it looks. Well, check it out. This is our rack and I've got everything packed on here uh, the way kind of I envisioned it. You can tell I've got my bigger PVMs down here on the lower shelf. I don't think it would be smart to put these 20 inches on the top shelf, but it will probably hold it because they only weigh about 80 pounds a piece. And then that board under there is gonna prevent that bottom shelf from giving and hopefully from bending. And on the middle shelf, I have a bunch of BVM cards, some test equipment, and that's pretty much it. But this is a good way for me to keep these things organized now. For when I'm testing stuff, I can come in here and quickly grab something. And then finally, up top, I'm going to be storing two to three uh, PVMs that are the 13 inch, and then more testing tools, or tube tester, and then degausser. And then, of course, like a worthless thing like this Ender Pro <laughs> printer, which is nothing more than a big paperweight at this point. I have to eventually try to get that back incorporated into the shop, but it's such a such a bad 3D printer, I, I really don't like it. And then here's my lovely wheeled shelf. And I'm really happy so far with the way this has all turned out. It's gonna help me a lot here in the shop. So I've got my rack completed here. This is the rolling rack. We're gonna move it here in a second. But I do have kind of a top heavy just to see how it holds up. And it's holding up great. Um, I have the wood shelving down there on the bottom two rows, but I didn't want to put it up here up top because I was afraid these CRTs may slip. And we don't want that to happen. We don't want them to slip on, fall off or anything. So I've done that. Now I'm just going to move them a little bit so you can see how easy this rolls, especially on this nice concrete floor. 
It rolls perfectly, no problems, very stable. <laughs> Unless I try to move it with the PVM. See, that's easy to try to push that. You can just push it right off. You can lock these wheels down if you need to and just turn them both off. And then if you try to move it, it's not moving. Now, with one side locked, you could still move this other side a little bit like that. But that's the other side down here is locked up. And it's doing well. I'm very impressed with it. To be honest with you, it wasn't too expensive. And the fact that you get two of them, that's really nice. That one over there is doing well. So is this one. And this greatly expands my ability to just hoard more CRTs. All right, let me give you some final thoughts on this rack as I've been able to use it now for a little bit of time and I have it set up and I have it full of CRTs. I will tell you that it does a really good job as it's set up now to hold these CRTs, especially that permanent one that is not rolling around. It can sit there and hold those larger CRTs on the bottom level and then I can fill up the middle and top level with things too because I'm not worried about it toppling over or moving around at all. The other rack has been also very helpful. Since it's on wheels, I can move it around a lot. It's gonna be more of the lighter rack. It's gonna have less CRTs on it normally. I mean, right now it's loaded up with a bunch, but normally it's gonna have less. I'll be able to move this around the shop and use it easily on shows and things to showcase multiple CRTs at once and have them safely movable around. Uh, so that rack is very versatile and helpful. All right, the other thing to say is that it doesn't come with any wood shelves, and I would not recommend using this long-term again with CRTs without that wooden shelf because I do feel like those metal shelves will start to droop, and that's really a problem with other lower quality shelving that you use over time. Uh, the stress and weight of those CRTs, it's so heavy and dense, it begins to bend on those shelves, and you end up with a U-shaped shelf and then the CRTs lean towards each other and it's just a, a recipe for eventually collapsing and failing and it doesn't look good, it doesn't look stable. So you do have to have that wood. Now, if you wanted to go to a hardware store and get this wood cut, you could do so. I bet you would be able to do the same thing for 20 to $30 here in the United States from a hardware store to have that uh, piece of wood cut for you and the shelves uh, more precise than what I did. All right, the last thing I want to say is where did I mess up in this? Uh, I did not wear safety goggles when I was using my skill saw, so you could beat me up in the comments for doing that. Uh, aside from that, I don't think I really messed up on anything else. Uh, the rack, again, is a great deal for me because I have a need for that kind of a rack, and it really meets every uh, need for me and checks every box. But I have other racks, like big ones, again, for those heavier duty things that go all the way to the ceiling in here, and then lower quality ones to hold lighter shelving stuff, uh, lighter equipment like consoles and things like that. I don't need the heavy duty shelf for that. So that's what I wanted to do is give you kind of an overview of this rack. I felt like it was worth the money that I paid for it. And then if you feel like this is something that you need, I recommend getting one. Uh, it, does, it is going to help me a lot here in my work at the shop. And that's really all there is to it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do me a favor and leave a like. And tell me what you think of this rack, if you have any other racks that you'd recommend. But go ahead, feel free to mention any racks that you like in the comments below. I'll leave that open-ended for everybody so uh, you, can <laughs> you can laugh about that. Anyway, thank you again for joining me today. And I'll see you guys next time with some more retro content.